Greetings everybody, hello guys, happy new year, etc, etc. Um, first project of the new year for me. Um, now that uh, my guests are no longer here and uh, the house is all back to normal and the tree is taken down and packed away for another year, etc. So this is a um, an upgrade to my main hi-fi system and I'm kind of breaking the rules I guess in the sense that my hi-fi at the moment is made up of everything that is offline. So I have vinyl, uh, audio cassette, CD, mini disc, all hooked up through the uh, uh, through the selector box and it all works really well. And I'm happy with that because at one time I have a lot of cassettes and CDs and I was going to rip everything and put everything online and then I thought, nah, that's going to take forever and a day. So I'm just going to, if I want to listen to an audio cassette, I'll just listen to it on the cassette. But the opposite is also true. I have lots and lots of uh, basically stuff I got on iTunes and other online sources in digital format. Um, and I have taken some of that material and put it on, burned it on the CDs and stuff uh, to put in the hi-fi. But I thought, yeah, I'm not going to do that for everything. So I need a way to be able to play my, if you like, digital music on, on the hi-fi. And so that's what this here is all about. Uh, again, since I'm not particularly interested in having the thing on the network all the time, uh, I put all my music, or the vast majority of it, uh, on this 128 gig micro SD card <laughs> and I guess I'm showing my age by by appreciating the degree to which the technology has has moved along that on this little tiny thing here there is 128 gig of storage uh, with most of my music collection on it um, so that's going to be plugged into the USB here so what this is the way this works is you have a, a Raspberry Pi this is a 3 a Raspberry Pi 3 and it's got a, uh, a DAC from a French company called Audiophonics. I picked this one for a number of reasons. One, it gets fairly decent reviews. And number two, all the outputs and inputs are at, the, at, the, at one end of the, uh, of the board. So everything is at the same end as the Pi. And so Audiophonics then make an enclosure that you can put the whole thing in and it all looks lovely on your hi-fi. They also have these really cool uh, gold-plated uh, phono characters for the outputs. The one slightly kludgy little bit is of course on a Raspberry Pi the um, the OS is on an SD card which is on the other side of the board and so what Audiophonics have done is they've come up with a uh, an extender cable which will allow the uh, SD card to route uh, to be at the front as well. Now the only problem that it looks like they encountered is there wasn't enough room for a standard extension cable to fit. So if you like the one slightly kludgy little bit of this project <laughs> is you have to take the SD card reader uh, slot thingy out of its case and basically you have to glue it to the bottom of the box because there's just barely enough room. And so I've just stuck it down with a little bit of a medium strength um, uh, super glue. So the rest is simply a case of hopefully uh, putting the whole thing together and hooking it up and also rather than be using these noisy uh, wall warts Audiophonics also produce a nice linear power supply um, which is a similar form factor to the uh, to the box here so the two side by side are going to look nice and neat uh, hooked up to the hi-fi rather than have cables all popping out all over the place and looking a mess I just need to uh, put this together and uh, We'll try it out before I put the final lid on first. And if that all works on the bench, then we'll uh, finish it off and uh, try it out on the actual hi-fi. Okay guys, so here it is all built up, um, ready for testing, ready to go. So from a software perspective, um, on the Audiophonics website uh, or on the uh, 
on the GitHub for the application which is called Volumio. You can download an image uh, which you then flash onto a, a micro SD card and you uh, stick that into the Raspberry Pi and uh, boot it up and we're all going. And I guess when you first boot it up it's like what they call a headless app. There's no, it doesn't talk directly to a screen. So the only way you access it is through uh, through a browser. And so when this boots up, it connects to the Wi-Fi. It, like there's explanations online on how all that gets done. And uh, then you basically key in. You open up a browser. You key in the IP address of uh, of the uh, of the Pi, and you get this screen, which is the sort of if you like the home screen from the Volumio app. And I won't bore you with all the details of it. It's fairly self-explanatory, but it has a little gear key over here. And then you get all the options down the side on uh, setting it up for playback and what type of um, driver that you use for the uh, DAC, etc., etc. All those good things. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory once you're in it. Now, what I've done here is, I put, as I said before, I put all my music on a, on a USB stick just to keep it easier and if I browse my music if I go back up to the top it's it, the only thing it sees is the USB so I click on the USB it tells me the folder and then you have all the other folders now at the moment I don't have any YouTube music on here so I'm gonna have to do that before I can give you a little quick demo otherwise it's just gonna copyright strike it or whatever and so yeah you simply just uh, select the um, music album you want pick the track and then uh, play as I say I'll uh, repeat this process with some YouTube music so uh, so it's clear so my only um, so everything works we're good um, my only nervousness at the moment is this the Pi connects to the local uh, uh, Wi-Fi and it's fine like this with the lid off because the um, wi the access point is just at the other side of this room and when I put it all when I cased it all up it still works fine however when I bring it up and hook it up onto the main hi-fi it's gonna be somewhat further away from the access point and so we'll have to see whether or not I'm able to get the bandwidth and the, you know the quality of the connection so this thing works properly or not so yeah um, I'd say we're pretty good uh, I probably have to make up a decent cable but for the purposes of testing I think this little cheapy one will work for now um, and so yeah we'll put it all back together and we will put it into uh, plug it into the hi-fi well guys, I'm afraid my worst fears with regard to Wi-Fi reception have uh, come to pass. This is the setup just in front of my normal video editing machine upstairs. The access point is literally at ceiling level below here and maybe about 10 feet off to the left. So one would think that uh, <laughs> you would have excellent Wi-Fi signal here, but with the, with the gadget right here, <clears throat> That's the minimum consistent signal level. If I move this guy over to here, it starts to drop out. And unfortunately, my proper hi-fi is about 10 or 12 feet to the right from here. And so I get no connection at all. So this is very frustrating. I think I'm going to, I don't know, I guess I'm going to have to get some sort of wireless repeater or something and put it up here just to fee fire the signal across the room. <laughs> Oh dear, oh well. It's a shame really, because other than that, it works really well. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting it all done. But I may as well end the video here, because I'll have to go and get something to extend the Wi-Fi coverage in this place, uh, in order for this thing to work properly. I did try and hook it up with an actual Ethernet cable. Didn't seem to do anything, so it doesn't look like whatever the software is here. It even tries to activate the uh, Ethernet connection. Anyway. There we go, so we'll have a little bit of YouTube music in the interim. Ah, relax the spirit after all that hassle. <laughs> So 
Some more to come, guys, when I get that uh, sorted out.